Good morning, good afternoon. This is Uta Yuaman speaking from WBCSD in Geneva. Welcome to this virtual event uh, from WBCSD on making the SDGs actionable for business. Uh, insights from sector roadmaps. Um, I'll see a few people are still connecting, but in the interest of time, I suggest we get going and uh, we'll, we'll connect people in as, as we go along. Um, but first, um, thank you very much for joining us today. We're delighted to have you all with us and um, to exchange experiences um, with you on, on developing SDG sector roadmaps. Uh, my name is Ute Jungam and as I said, I'm the manager here of our um, program area on sustainable development goals and I'm joined by my colleague Filippo Velio from our senior management team who oversees the, um, the work of the people program which includes the SDGs and our outreach work and I'm also joined by my colleague Florian Miko on the back end managing um, the technology of the session today. Um, if you have any questions or doubts you can always uh, chat to us at any time and we'll, we'll help to um, help to uh, we'll try to, to help uh, when we can. Um, Florian, can we move to the next slide, please? Thank you. Um, just a few housekeeping items up front. Um, you probably heard a little voice or seen a little window popping up on your screen that the session is being recorded. We will be sharing the recording following the session uh, today. Participants are muted and we ask you to please stay on mute while you're not speaking. This is just to ensure we don't have any disturbances or, or uh, static on the line. And as I said, slides, but also the recordings um, will, be, will be shared following, uh, following today's session. At any time, please use the chat function uh, to, in the main control tab to type in questions or comments. Uh, you can also raise your hand to indicate that you would like to be unmuted. In some cases, you can even um, unmute um, yourself directly if you want to make a comment. And of course, um, in addition to, to the team who, who will be speaking today, um, we're very pleased to have an outstanding lineup of, of speakers um, this afternoon. All of them have been or continue to lead uh, res their respective um, efforts within their sectors uh, on uh, SDG sector roadmaps and we look forward to hearing um, from them today. From the oil and gas sector um, or for the oil and gas sector roadmap, very pleased to have Anthony Andrews with us um, uh, rep coming, coming in or dialing in um, from the UK uh, today uh, from BP International. Out of the United States, uh, Ana Maria Arce and Maureen de Sanso representing the tire uh, industry sector roadmap from Bridgestone and Goodyear. Uh, out of Chile, far, far away, <laughs> Nicolas uh, Gordon, um, Director of Corporate Sustainability at CNPC and representing the, the forest sector, and Eduardo Maura dialing in from Portugal representing the electric utility sector, um, yeah, from EDP, from Portugal. And last uh, but not least, of course, Brian Hartland from ERM, who will be moderating the conversation today. So thanks for everybody, uh, thanks to everyone for joining and for taking the time and we'll be, we're very pleased to have you with us and hear from you uh, in a short while. Also, just uh, out of custom and good practice, a quick reminder on antitrust. Please avoid any discussion and any conversation with competitively sensitive topics that include pricing, cost, bid strategies, future capacity additions or reductions, customers to output decisions, if we can Keep this in mind as we go along, that'd be great. Thank you. Next slide. Sorry, actually not next slide, we're switching screen, sorry. <laughs> before, we, uh, before we begin, just a quick question uh, for us to know uh, how you've learned about today's session, uh, whether that's through a personalized email, uh, our website or social media, and so on. If you could uh, go on, on your phone or in a separate window in your browser, go to menti.com and enter the code uh, seven, uh, 47492, and you can um, quickly participate in this uh, interactive direct polling. See how well this works. A couple of responses are coming in as we speak. Um, 
Again, please just go to menti.com and enter the code 47492 and then select your response. Give it a few more seconds for people to participate. Okay, so um, some selected personalized email, the WPCSD website, but also our partner network. All right, well, thanks for, thanks for letting us know. Um, I think we're tracking this. Um, from our events team side, so it's good, good information for us. Thank you. But I think in the interest of time, let's move on. So um, on today's agenda, we already covered most of um, the welcome and the introductory remarks, as well as the housekeeping. Um, I will now shortly pass over to Filippo to take you through the SDG landscape, some latest developments and trends. Before I'll give you a quick overview of the SDG sector roadmap concept and framework. And then we hear from our panelists on their insights and experiences from actually putting the, the framework into practice. We have time for questions and discussions and of course a couple of wrap up uh, remarks at the end. Um, again, please do feel free to use the chat function at any time uh, for questions, comments, or do raise your hand um, and we can unmute your line. So with that said, um, I think we're, we're all ready to go. So over to you, Filippo. Thank you, uh, Uta. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, or maybe even uh, good evening to all of you. This is Filippo with the WBCSD team. Uh, delighted also to welcome you on behalf uh, of the WBCSD team to this uh, session around uh, roadmaps and delighted to be able to share uh, perspectives from our side and in particular, of course, counting on members' uh, insights. And thank you so much to our members who have uh, kindly given away their, their time and, and prepared for it. Um, to share this a little bit later on. Very excited about it and, and hopefully we can build strongly on the, on the earlier session we've had today to accommodate uh, other uh, time zones. Uh, very briefly, uh, given that we're also welcoming, um, let's say, non-WBCST members and, and partners from, let's say, outside the traditional stakeholder group of the Council, a very, very brief overview on WBCSD. Uh, WBCSD, World Business Council for Sustainable Development, regrouping uh, around 200 companies uh, from uh, all across uh, the world, 40 uh, countries if you take the headquarter uh, location of, of uh, members and 20 industry sectors uh, cutting across a large number of uh, value uh, chains. Uh, united by the belief in uh, business leadership, so the role of the importance of leadership, of business leadership in driving a more sustainable uh, future, uh, which we have determined and defined uh, around the vision that you see outlined here, uh, nine plus billion people uh, living well within the boundaries uh, of uh, the planet by the middle uh, of uh, the century. At the core of WBCSD, uh, Florian, next slide please, is strong uh, member base united by the belief that the business and sustainability agenda are mutually uh, reinforcing and that more sustainable companies uh, are uh, more uh, successful and our mission is very much driven uh, by that uh, underlying belief. Warm welcome to all of the members, of course, in speaker position today, but also to all members who are dialing in uh, to hear uh, these sectoral perspectives and these uh, insights around the sector roadmaps and methodology and the learnings and the value of that work. Uh, warm welcome also to our global network partner, our institutional partners all across the world. We've got 60 across uh, the countries all across the world, and we're delighted to have several of them also on the line uh, today. Uh, WBCSD uh, very briefly is built, the work of WBCSD is built around uh, six uh, programs uh, with underlying program areas. The topic of today, SDG, sits uh, within the people uh, program, uh, which has been sort of expanded to also include this important SDGs uh, function at the level of both policy and action, but also at the level of uh, roadmaps. But as you can see here, WBCSD covers a large number of uh, areas in the sustainability uh, space, from circularity to urban infrastructure, to climate and energy, uh, of course also to food and nature, to the people agendas I was alluding to before, the social impact agenda, 
and of course also to the agenda around measurement, valuation and disclosure of company data in terms of aligning a value creation with the principles of sustainability and we grouped under the redefining value uh, program. Um, in addition to the six uh, programs, of course, in light of the circumstances, in light of the um, uh, tragic and, and worrisome circumstances of uh, COVID-19, we, uh, we have also been developing over the last three uh, months a number of response program uh, areas looking at gathering you know, member uh, insights, member uh, drive and member motivation for uh, collaboration around uh, three topics. Uh, one, the long-term impacts of COVID-19. Uh, secondly, uh, this uh, return to new normal under the return to new normal header, the topics of employee health and business uh, recovery. And uh, thirdly, the, the challenges around uh, supply chain, supply chain resilience with a particular focus right now around food uh, supply chains. Uh, some of you or many of you may have seen some of the outputs that we have been putting out over the last few weeks and you're more than welcome to visit the World Business Council website to, to find them all, in particular a thought piece around the long-term uh, consequences of, of COVID-19, which outlines a little bit of the strategic thinking of uh, members uh, around it. So definitely trying to stay attuned to the circumstances and shaping the work program uh, around it and of course of integrating the COVID-19 realities into the existing and ongoing work program areas into the six areas that I outlined uh, before. So this will be it in terms of a very short introduction to WBCSD. Allow me just a few slides to share a little bit of perspective around the uh, sustainable development goals uh, landscape as we see it sort of in the middle of uh, 2020. Uh, how do we uh, see it uh, develop? How do we see it evolve? Uh, also in light of COVID, but also with a few uh, data uh, points. Uh, we have been outlining uh, for, uh, for quite a while now that the sustainability challenges that the world is facing are of course increasingly uh, complex and increasingly global in its nature and its interconnectedness. For a simplification side, we, uh, we always go down to these three pillars of uh, climate emergency, inequality and nature loss, which is sort of focusing um, most probably the, the, the world's attention around these sort of three uh, topics, but of course many interconnections between them and many interconnections to other areas of the sustainability agenda. At the same time, as we all know, in the next slide, uh, Florian, thank you, uh, we know very much that since 2015, for the past, uh, well, uh, almost five years now, uh, four years and nine months, we know the overall roadmap, the overall direction of travel laid out by the Sustainable Development Goals with the 17 uh, goals and, and, the, and the various targets underneath, let alone um, the, the various indicators. And we also have, thanks to the Paris uh, 2015 agreement, the COP21 agreement, an overall direction of travel around the climate agenda. So in a provocative way, we can say that, you know, the, the roadmap is clear, the, the road ahead is uh, well defined and well articulated, but of course, it is about landing that roadmap and making it actionable, including uh, for business, and we'll be coming back uh, to that. Uh, we have seen at uh, 2019, um, sort of uh, four years into the SDGs and, and the usual reporting cycles that institutions and governmental entities make around progress on these goals, on these uh, global goals. We have seen a, a number of interesting uh, data points uh, emerge, a number of interesting uh, articulations around how to really accelerate action because uh, as I'll come back a little, in a little while, there's been progress but certainly not fast enough. So what needs to be done? How can data uh, tracking be improved? How can reporting cycles be improved to really inform better decisions? And how can this decision also inform this decade that we are entering, really this decade of action, this decade of delivery that has been outlined by the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres? How do we really enter more from the uh, ambition side in terms of really going beyond an incremental agenda, which is really what the SDGs uh, call for? Uh, if we take sort of a, as I often call it, a glass half full or glass half empty approach, we can say that, you know, prior to this uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic that has kicked in now for quite a, a few months, uh, you could look at some positive trends, positive developments in the SDGs uh, space ranging across a number of SDGs uh, that you see outlined here. Uh, from a glass half full perspective, you can point to a direction of travel that points to progress, that points to hopeful signs uh, of people 
uh, earning better livelihoods, of people coming out of extreme uh, poverty, of people uh, having access to better uh, sources of energy, to more and better sources of energy, or to energy alone, let alone uh, housing and a number of other uh, areas. At the same time, with a glass half uh, empty approach, you can also see through the various data analysis that we have conducted that there are a number of areas that really sort of still act as, as significant uh, pain points. If we look at uh, the, the ongoing, I always call it a scandal in terms of the, 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 the wrong direction with regard to hunger and uh, malnutrition, uh, overall we see here hundreds of millions of people still uh, suffering from this uh, uh, very, very uh, serious uh, problem. We see that progress on poverty is not necessarily uh, going so well, it is slowing. And we all know about the challenges around rising emissions. Uh, also, uh, we will have seen, of course, at the end of 2019 with the Madrid COP some challenges around finding an overall multilateral agreement for the road ahead. And we also know about the, the data points that are coming in with increasing uh, urgency from scientists around the biodiversity. And so certainly sort of with a glass half uh, empty approach, certainly also several worries to be had on the uh, immediate horizon, uh, both uh, of, of all actors engaged on the sustainability agenda. If we then take the COVID-19 sort of lens onto uh, this agenda of the SDGs, we can also, in a nutshell, uh, speak about some uh, setbacks and some challenges that have uh, um, intensified over the past uh, several uh, months. Uh, I'm sure in every country, wherever we are, we have been uh, facing challenges around uh, education. We have been looking at challenges around uh, unemployment and, and what the long-term prospects of people coming back to work uh, following lockdowns or shutdowns uh, are. Uh, we have seen the issue of uh, access, access uh, to goods and services, accesses without uh, discrimination. How is the COVID um, pandemia um, how is it hitting um, mostly on the mo mo most uh, vulnerable segments of the population at the level of income, but also unfortunately at the level uh, of gender and sort of at a macroeconomic space, uh, worries of course also about uh, the retreat into uh, protectionism and the uh, overall uh, significant uh, reduction in um, sort of um, inter-border, uh, cross, cross-border uh, trade here, as you see here, one data point pointing to about a third, uh, 30, over 30% 30 plunge in this year, in this early year uh, alone. So certainly some worrisome uh, setbacks and, and challenges that are faced both by the business uh, community, but also more widely by a wide range of stake stakeholders. So how do we position then the idea and the ambition of business action, business solutions and business progress on the sustainability agenda on the, in alignment with the SDGs as you well know from WCSD, for those who know as well, we have been hammering away on this particular slide. I think we haven't changed the wording in, in, in several years now, really saying and, and driving the message that businesses of all sizes, of all sectors, of all countries, uh, with all sorts of um, ownership uh, structures have a key role in contributing to delivering uh, the uh, SDGs in contributing solutions, processes, uh, products and services, but also, of course, uh, generating employment, acting as source of innovation and technology, uh, leveraging uh, their uh, finance, but of course, also importantly, and for those who are familiar with WBCSD, also an important message, driving a responsible business agenda forward embedded in a strong respect uh, for human rights or along uh, value chains and in business uh, relationships. So certainly, we continue to see, and more urgently than ever, a key role for business in contributing to realizing the SDGs. Um, as we can see on the next slide, of course, it's just a short synthesis, but companies of all uh, sort of uh, different sorts of sectors in our membership have been uh, working uh, diligently in advancing this agenda and embedding this agenda uh, strategically within their uh, various uh, processes and within their decision-making uh, structures, uh, let alone the disclosure uh, mechanisms, with quite a high degree of, of sophistication. And certainly, I want to encourage you to, to see and to visit uh, through a link that we'll give you later on, uh, numerous examples, such as the ones outlined here below, that go really into uh, quite a level of uh, specificity of how, of how a company sees itself materially contributing uh, to this agenda uh, in 2020, but also, of course, over the medium and long 
uh, term. So certainly encouraging science from our membership, all the while taking into account also a, a wider context reality, which is not uh, necessarily um, yet where it could be, let's say, or where we would like it to be overall uh, from our perspective. You have almost three quarters of CEOs, as you see here, uh, polled by our colleagues in the UN Global Compact and Accenture, uh, saying that you know there's a strong belief that business can play a critical role in uh, contributing to the SDGs, yet only one out of five of these top executives uh, believes that this is actually currently the case. So certainly a long road to travel still to bridge that gap between sort of a belief and the actual reality, how to really make this agenda uh, actionable is one of the core points of today's uh, discussions and insights that we will hear from our members across uh, various uh, sectors. On the next slide, we can also see a number of data points with regard, again, from our colleagues in Global Compact and Accenture, with regard to perceived progress uh, on business action across the 17 goals. And we see here quite a wide range of, um, of uh, differences. For example, interesting to note on SDG 5, on gender equality, a strong perception of uh, that there is some action, uh, really sort of tangible action by uh, business. But if we see on a number of other uh, goals. If you take, for example, SDG 14, life uh, below water, certainly not maybe the statistics we would like to see, but they reflect also a certain uh, reality around uh, perceptions. And so certainly data to sort of be analyzed and continue to work on uh, in order to capture the latest trends and developments uh, by companies in this particular space. As I was outlining before, entering this decade of delivery, or actually being now in this decade, of delivery. One of the key questions, uh, as it is outlined by our colleagues in the Sustainable Development Solutions uh, Network on this particular slide, uh, Guido Schmidt uh, Traub uh, put it very eloquently, we thought, around the SDGs providing an overall uh, set of objectives for every country in the world. And let's not forget, it's a universal agenda applicable to every country. No country can yet claim to have achieved these goals. And it will be certainly a challenging and ambitious agenda that goes beyond incrementalism. But in and of itself, this agenda is not an action agenda, uh, contrary to what, it some, what is sometimes being said. So how do you really land this SDGs agenda into something, uh, as he puts it here, uh, that where you can determine how the SDG outcomes can be achieved at global, national, and local scales, including by the business community, is certainly one of the great uh, urgencies in making these SDGs uh, actionable. So um, this is basically a short conclusion, a short introduction to my conclusion, a short conclusion to my introduction, excuse me, it's been a long day, um, around the WCSD perspective on uh, SDGs and uh, business. We have a lot of information uh, on this SDG hub uh, that we have set up a number of years ago. It is freely accessible information, ranging from e-learning tools to awareness raising um, mechanisms, uh, data and visuals that you can use to, of course, a number of reports and uh, wider analytical pieces that are available to anyone in the, interest, in the business community interested uh, in uh, diving a little bit deeper into it. I certainly invite you to visit it also on the back of today's discussion where some of these tools and materials will be uh, referenced um, thoroughly and, of course, with a particular focus today on the sector roadmap work. So with that said, Uta, I'm handing back to you because we're moving on to the specific uh, area of the sector roadmaps, how they've come about, with what ideology and what methodology. Over to you, Uta. Thank you, Filippo. Um, so back to me, and I think we can move directly to the next slide, please. Thanks. So as Filippo has outlined, um, our main effort at WBCSD is really on making the SDGs actionable for business. Uh, we do that at different levels. Um, today, we want to focus specifically on how we work with the different industries on making the SDGs actionable uh, for their sectors. We're doing this um, against uh, following the recommendation that came out of the Better Business, Better World report issued by the Business and Sustainable Development Commission in 2018, really suggesting that developing detailed roadmaps to help um, industries shift uh, towards sustainable development in line with the SDGs would really generate uh, greatest benefit uh, to sectors and um, we, we've taken that recommendation very seriously and followed up by developing um, a set of guidelines or a set of, well, actually a framework, a methodology um, that is applicable across industries and geographies 
um, and really just providing a step-by-step -step process as how sectors can go about um, d developing a roadmap. We have done that in close collaboration with ERM. We're pleased to have ERM with us today as well to um, talk about this process a little bit more. Um, it, this was first piloted by the chemical sector um, and then followed through by a number of other, um, other sectors who we have with us today. So what do these uh, sector roadmaps do or what, what are they? Um, we consider them basically a a strategic compass for sectors and companies, providing first of all a safe space for, um, for insight sharing, for learning among peers uh, within, within the same sector, but also uh, a process to really go into, into the complexities, to dive into the complexities of the SDGs, not just the 17 goals, but the 169 targets and the indicators that sit underneath that, that make that agenda whole. So it's really about unpacking that, that, um, that complexity, but then also looking at the opportunities that sit within, within uh, the agenda. Um, then again, it's also a strategy to actually help maximize SDG impact collectively. So coming together as a sector and looking at where you can generate the greatest impact. Uh, and then of course, drive, drive uh, action forward uh, to deliver action on that in a, in a collaborative uh, spirit. Next slide, please. Thank you. So, um, as I said, it's a framework, it's a methodology that is applicable across geographies and, and um, from global to, to regional levels. Um, but basically what it does, it aims to set a common vision for the respective sector as to how, what does the sector want to achieve? What does it want to be by 2030? Um, it then looks at mapping the current SDG interactions in terms of how does the sector today interact uh, positively with the SDGs, where are the positive impacts and contributions the sector is making today, but also looking at what are the negative um, impacts on the SDGs today, and then taking that picture, taking that analysis, and um, exploring where the greatest opportunities are for driving change and for generating and maximizing impact and uh, thereby driving um, positive impact forward. Uh, and then, of course, articulating um, concrete actions as to how these impact opportunities can actually be realized. Um, we believe that with that, sectors can really enhance their license to operate, um, enable them to, to better manage their material risks, but also, of course, exploring um, new opportunities, new markets for, for growth. Uh, as I said, uh, we've had already a number of experiences, a couple of roadmaps that have been completed. Um, so the chemical sector was the pilot, followed uh, shortly by the forest sector and the Indian cement sector. Uh, and today, uh, or this year, um, we're working on three different uh, roadmaps and very pleased to hear more about this later from the oil and gas sector, um, the electric utility sector, as well as the, the tire sector. Uh, I don't want to go into too much detail because we simply do not have the time, but I just want to give you a bit of a teaser and, encourage, and would like to encourage you to just go to our website and look at, look at the different roadmaps that have been completed already to, um, to dive a little bit deeper on what this can look like. Again, it's, it's one methodology, it's one framework. They've all followed the same, the, same, um, the same steps. However, the output can actually be quite different, can be quite sector specific. The methodology is flexible enough to really um, consider sector, um, sector um, uniqueness, if you will, um, really describing how each sector works and interacts with the SDGs in, in different um, shapes and forms. Um, and then secondly, in the second part, uh, identifying again where, where the sector can have the greatest impact. Again, here are two examples uh, from the chemical and the forest sector of how they've done that. Both uh, in terms of their, their positive interactions with the SDGs today, but also their negative interactions and to what extent they actually want to change that uh, in the future and where they want to and how they want to um, generate uh, or deliver positive, positive impact. And uh, lastly, this all comes together uh, or the, the roadmaps basically conclude with um, what we call impact pathways, which really um, outline step-by-step step each impact opportunity 
each respective um, action that supports that impact opportunity. It identifies key partners, key stakeholders that need to be involved to really um, make sure the, the impact is being realized. It looks at the time horizon um, in terms of short, medium and long term. How, how quickly can that impact actually be realized? And of course, the level of impact, is it high, medium or low? Ideally, it should be at least medium. And then it uh, tags or connects that, of course, back to the SDGs, not just the goals, but also the, the respective targets, because that's a very important level of, of granularity in, in the SDG space. You really need to go to the target level to understand the, the complexity and the value of, of this um, quite a comprehensive uh, agenda. And uh, we've also learned through this process that uh, these roadmaps provide a great opportunity for, for CEO leadership and CEO commitment. Um, we've had uh, good experiences um, in that uh, with, with CEOs really coming forward, stepping up and uh, coming to our events, speaking on behalf of their sectors, uh, promoting their roadmaps, engaging in different dialogues at the UN level. Um, it's, it's just a good opportunity, first of course, to, to have challenging conversations within the sector, but then actually then actually taking that conversation outside of, outside of the sector sphere and have, um, have dialogues at the UN level, as well as with, with uh, other, other stakeholders. And we've been using mainly our, our events um, that we host as part of the high level political forum, but also the UN uh, General, General Assembly. Uh, to do so. And I think with that, um, I leave it here for now. Um, let's hear actually how this is being put into practice. And I'll just pass over to Brian Hartland from ERM, who will now um, take us through the panel conversation. And I ask all of the panelists to please unmute your, li unmute your lines and to please um, switch on your video so we can see you when you speak. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Uta and Filippo. This is Brian from ERM speaking. So thanks again for the background and introduction. Um, it's great to see so many connected on the webinar today from across the world. And also thank you to the panelists who've joined. Um, we have a great group, I guess, those who've already developed a roadmap. Um, so we'll get that perspective. And then a number and most of the group who are still in the process and they're still shaping what the roadmap will look like. Um, so I've been part of the ERM team who've worked with WBCSD to develop this framework. And I think we've worked with, with just over 60 companies since to develop the roadmaps for the six sectors that Uta showed. And for me, really the most interesting part um, has been to see how each sector is adapting, applying the guidelines differently and, and what the output looks like. And this is largely coming down to the nature of the group and who's in it, the context of the sector and different expectations on, on what they'd like to achieve. And, and this is really leading into my, my first question for Eduardo and Anna. I, I'd like to, to pick on both of you first on motivations and expectations. I was wondering if you could tell us, um, I guess, what motivated your company and you personally to participate and lead in the development of a roadmap for your sector? And also, what are your expectations in terms of, of the output, um, given that, that these uh, roadmaps are still under development for each of your groups? Maybe Eduardo, over to you first. Oh, yes. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, well, um, first question about motivation is um, the way we look at WBCSD. WBCSD um, can, uh, has the, the strength to unify and join uh, the most relevant companies uh, in the world that want to, to tackle the sustainability uh, roadmap in general. So it's the first reason to, to join the, this new program, this uh, roadmap, um, because really we find that's the best organization to, to call. Okay. But uh, apart, apart that general question, um, our motivation came from a very uh, personal uh, insight uh, question. Early in the five years ago, when we stepped in uh, commitment, uh, committing to, to the, the SDGs, we clearly chose um, 
um, the, the access to energy and climate uh, change uh, action, um, climate action. It was uh, based on a perception on the goal, okay? Later on, uh, we have done a deep dive uh, looking at the targets and we start to look uh, at uh, each target and find connections with uh, our activity. Uh, let's say we were uh, looking um, uh, through the, the, the eyes of the materiality process, okay? We find a lot of, of targets, of SDGs targets to, to well, to, to contribute, to contribute. But uh, later on, not at the early moment, but later on in the 2016, uh, we find uh, that the relevant indicators uh, start to be set officially and we start looking uh, on that. And then the problems come to us. Because um, really we realize that uh, it, there is a, a lot of difference between the perception of the target level approach and the indicator approach. Um, we understood that um, uh, at the early steps, we as a great part of the um, companies, uh, the major part of companies, um, had an approach like, uh, let's, um, let's choose uh, the target, let's choose some targets. But really, the, the point is uh, that um, uh, indicator SDGs indicators really choose companies. It's a reverse question. Uh, SDGs choose really uh, companies through uh, indicators. So the question was not about contributing to SDGs. The question was about uh, what is our baseline on the SDG indicators and how can we state that uh, we reach uh, the target? Um, so uh, when WBCSD uh, promoted this roadmap, we found it was uh, marvelous to start this uh, discussion on uh, impact, uh, on the impact of each company and uh, the connection between uh, SDGs and uh, companies' strategies, uh, goals, and uh, KPIs. So uh, it was a rather good uh, motivation to, mm -hmm. to, to join uh, the group. About expectations, well, we, we imagine that uh, uh, the group of companies that are members of the, the, the working group um, can um, print uh, a vision for all the sector. Uh, the, I believe together we are the most um, the most committed companies uh, to SDGs, and so we can print together um, a view that can help uh, uh, all the sector. That's the first uh, expectation and also to reinforce our own position when dealing with stakeholders. It will be more interesting to go to speak with a shareholder or investor or um, to some supplier in the supply chain and to show not only our personal um, strategy, but how does it fit on the, the global uh, roadmap to... Mm -hmm to the SDGs. Finally, uh, another expectation, even it is a remote expectation, more uh, an ambition than an expectation, is about uh, some cross-sectoral uh, roadmap. Uh, cement uh, sector is very relevant for uh, an utility company. Mm -hmm. uh, forest uh, sector is very relevant for a utility uh, company. Also, oil and gas sector, uh, is all about energy. So we can imagine that in the end of the process, uh, we, we can uh, find the links 
between all those sectors and uh, find the hurt of the, the process. That will be very nice. Great. Thank you, Eduardo. And, and definitely for the ongoing roadmaps, we are looking at how to look at those synergies where there's uh, a potential for cross-sector collaboration. So, so thanks for pointing that out. Um, Anna, maybe over to you just again in terms of your, I guess, motivation and expectations um, for the roadmap you're working on. Sure. Thank you, um, Brian. Uh, basically, we need to start by saying that the entire industry project exists since 15 years ago. So that was kind of a very um, clear starting point for the companies that are members of that project, understanding that the, the mandate or the vision of the tire industry project is to drive sustainability and have a more sustainable tire industry. So with that in, 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 in the back of our heads, of course, uh, we decided that the, the right thing to do was to start a process where all the industry was, or the tire industry project was represented, but also considering that some of the aspects that are going to be um, shown as part of that roadmap might not necessarily be part of the core um, mandate of, of TIP, but because we are very commit, committed companies, we understand that that's the right thing to do. So that in terms of the, of the industry sector per se. Um, so I think as individual companies, we realize that there is a, a challenge in front of us in terms of how to manage and address the, uh, the expectations around SDGs. So unless we as a sector have a better understanding of what this might look like for, for the industry as a whole, it's going to be very challenging for individual contributors to have a real impact, right? So I think for Bridgestone in particular, this was the case. We rely on the work that we have been doing for more than 15 years under TIP, and we understood that this was the right, the right way to do it. And taking, of course, the experience of previous road sector uh, um, maps, um, this was this was a great opportunity not only for TIP but also, as I said, for the individual companies to better understand where can we make an impact, how realistic our our approach is, and where can we actually have a um, a, a real collaboration and real connection. As as Eduardo just mentioned, those cross collaborations are, are are fundamental for us. There's no single industry that can solve any of the expectations or the SDGs issues. Uh, in, in, in isolation, right? So we need that collaboration and that roadmap was the, the way to go for us. Great, thank you, Anna. And uh, that's a great point. I think what we're seeing across um, the different sector roadmaps is that uh, people are looking to create this uh, common vision on where they can have the most impact and really focus. I think it, within your group, that's particularly um, evident. Um, great, so, so maybe moving on, um, and speaking on the oil and gas sector roadmap, we're taking a slightly different approach where WBCSD is working with IPCA, which is an oil and gas industry association to develop this. Um, so for Anthony, um, could you share with us, um, I guess, what are the most challenging elements of advancing IPCA's existing SDG atlas, which was published a number of years ago, um, into a roadmap? And I guess, what are some of the key learnings so far, again, given that the roadmap is still under development and, and not yet finished? Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> Thanks, Brian. Um, yeah. So as you mentioned, we we've gone through sort of, if you like, the uh, in some respects, the baselining for for the roadmap uh, with the atlas, which was very much a kind of um, taking stock of what the sector and companies within the sector is are currently doing in respect of sustainable development, but also the SDGs specifically. So kind of linking activity, almost that first step, kind of mapping activity mm -hmm. that I think m many many companies and sectors have, have kind of gone through. So we. Uh, we went through that process several years ago and, and generated this this atlas, um, which has proved to be a very useful document um, in many ways. You know, in many ways, but also just articulating sort of the challenges as, as the sector sees them, uh, and where we can you know kind of have a have an impact. So we had a good kind of baseline um, in terms of the the kind of the roadmap um, itself. It's clearly that, that is then kind of taking that and looking at the kind of where can you really move the dial, where can you really have where where are the opportunities. And I think some of the challenges which underpin that, I mean, there's, there's many, not, not least the fact that, you know, whilst sectors are often seen as, you know, a homogenous kind of group of companies who all do essentially the same thing for the oil and gas. And I'm sure for all the different companies, that's, you know, frankly, not the case. People, uh, companies within that sector do distinct parts of, you know, whether it be different parts of the value chain or 
whether they're service providers versus you know kind of fully integrated companies so the companies within the sector have different um things to, to kind of to bring and they also have different starting points um so there's, there's a lot of dif um sort of differences within within the sector so that's kind of one kind of component now clearly ipica um its membership is around i think 70 or so members uh, of, of kind of companies of also kind of regional um regional associations as well for the sector um so sort of seeking to bring those together in a collaborative sense um is again given that everyone's in a slightly different place also not only with what they do but in in terms of the how far they are along in the journey as well um you've really got quite a, a lot of differences sort of there so i think bringing you know a real fundamental challenge is is kind of bringing all that stuff from the, the good stuff together um and striking the right balance between um making sure that you're you know being genuinely sort of looking at the opportunities and that's kind of you know moving moving the uh moving the bar for, uh, forward but also that you're doing so in a way which recognizes that everyone is on a journey and and, and actually if you're speaking to kind of you know uh, a, a local association in a, in a country that, that's not in kind of western europe or wherever it might be that, that the challenges that are faced can be quite different so to to sort of acknowledge those differences um but i think it, that said i mean i think coming together uh, there's also there's been a lot of kind of enthusiasm and energy and people wanting to genuinely um seek to kind of really tell their story and then also um kind of push the push the narrative ahead as well in terms of um what's possible a lot of sharing of kind of best practice i think that's that was rooted in the atlas and that's equally valid moving forward to to the roadmap um and then being clear i think as well on sort of kind of the scope of what, what is you're focused on recognizing that companies within our sector um are you know involved in things that are outside sort of traditional oil and gas and that's kind of one thing but that's not necessarily the case for all all of the the mm -hmm. members of, of ipica so several different components there um but really i think striking the right balance between what is seen as genuine opportunity and kind of moving the dial versus you know making sure that you're kind of bringing um you're, you're enabling everyone to to kind of um to understand where you are and to, to kind of empathize with that position as well. Great, thank you, Anthony. And certainly you're right, I think the scope and boundaries um, is very tricky for certain sectors, yours in particular, um, due just to the nature and diversity of the group. Um, and it's something that we try to work out, but um, uh, challenging with global roadmaps in large sectors. Um, but we'll definitely keep in mind, and again, look how the, the cross-sector collaboration could work. Um, I think what we could do next, maybe go over to Nicholas. Um, so the Forest Solutions Group within WBCSD has been actively working to address sustainability issues for a number of years. And their roadmap, the Forest Sector SDG Roadmap, was launched last July at the UN High Level Political Forum. And Nicholas, I was wondering if you could tell us a bit more about, I guess, how the roadmap um, has maybe changed or influenced the way that you or your company think um, or work with the Sustainable Development Goals. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, you know, I, I think the uh, the eighteen month process of developing the roadmap was was very exciting because it it really it really allows companies to identify you know the relationship with the SDGs at, at several different levels. So, you know, it was very important for us as a group, as a sector group, to to identify the most relevant SDGs and you know in and the specific targets within the SDGs. Uh, really dive a little deeper into where as a sector we felt we we had a stronger connection but then again i think each each member and each participant of this process then sort of internalizes this this group reasoning and thinking but then we bring it at a, at a company level and we might find that there is a, a, a large degree of alignment or we might find that we have certain specifics uh, perhaps certain local or regional context-based differences that that makes us really look at this as a sector roadmap, but then with with a specific sort of you know internalization into into our our own operations and the way that our businesses work. In in the forest sector, there are what are known as integrated companies, which means that they produce, for example, pulp or timber, and then they have other other type of uh, 
production processes where they they transform these these raw materials into into final products so it really depends on where you lie within the value chain and what types of activities you have the way that you finally will will interact with with the sdgs um, so that local that regional those those local and regional differences i think were, were also something that we really learned quite a bit we were perhaps i believe the only southern hemisphere based um, imported company so we we had a certain degree of, of of challenges or or impacts that perhaps were less noticeable in the in the northern hemisphere and vice versa so i think i think the exercise of really going through the roadmap as a group um provides a, a lot of context that uh that you you really can't uh, find when you're when trying to do this on your own um I think understanding the sector's current level of, of impacts and contributions, as, as Uta was saying earlier, is, is extremely beneficial. And then we, we also had to question whether this roadmap was something that was just really representing the members' uh, perspective, or really we wanted to come out with something that represented the entire sector. This means small and medium you know, companies out there, it means that we're representing countries and regions that perhaps were not even involved in this process. So, so it was, it's really an interesting exercise of trying to, to find the, the common elements of a sector, the leading practices, but at, yet at the same time producing a document which, which is, you know, helpful and beneficial for anybody in the sector that wants to become engaged. It also helped us, and in, in particularly at CMPC, it helped us to establish or, or perhaps confirm, you know, the ambition of our goals in, in, in this sense for the, for the next 10 years. We, uh, as, you, as you mentioned, Brian, our, our CEO presented this guide at the UN last year. So for, for our company and for me particularly, I think it, it made a huge difference because it, it got our CEO involved and it made sort of the guide, the process of the content, something very personal to him. So his engagement and what, what's happened after his, uh, his appearance at the UN has been, I think, extremely impactful at, at CMPC. And lastly, you know, in terms of, of ambition uh, and how perhaps the, the, the roadmap has influenced our ambition, yeah, you know, I, I still am a strong believer that the ambition has to really be science sort of based and, and aligned with, with what science is telling us. But perhaps the roadmap has provided, you know, a number of new pathways and new ways of looking at this um, or new partners or, or, or new enablers that we need to be very aware of in terms of, of how to reach those, those targets and those goals. So in the case of my company, we... We set four very long-term, you know, ambitious sustainability goals, and they were all very much aligned with uh, some of the actions that were identified in the roadmap. So I think at, ultimately you you have a very nicely packaged sort of solution that you can present either to internal or external stakeholders when it comes to these these topics. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you, Nicholas. Uh, lots of great points there. Um, I, I think it, keeping in mind for the other roadmaps under development, looking at the local and regional differences, the boundaries and scope again, who's involved, who's missing from the group, and who's it for. Um, but also, I, I guess, how practically how you're using it's really helpful uh, and getting the CEO engagement. Um, maybe just a follow-on question for you on, um, I guess, engagement or external stakeholder engagement. Um, so the forest sector group um, went through quite an extensive process, our consultation process throughout the development, um, including with WWF, IUCN, and a number of others. Um, how has the roadmap, I guess, benefited from this engagement? And I guess, do you have any recommendations for the others uh, as we're still um, midway through a number of the roadmaps? Um, in particular, given the virtual nature of engagement these days. Um, so anything you'd recommend from your experience? Sure. I mean, the, the stakeholder consultation phase is, is really critical for, for the validation of, of the final document, right? With, without that, it's really going to represent the group of companies' opinion and, and, and you know, validation is, could, be, could be strongly questioned. So we, as you said, we consulted a dozen of key stakeholders during the development process. Uh, we interviewed them early on in, in the process. I think, 
I think not too early in the sense that we already had a, a, a relatively clear understanding and idea of what we wanted to accomplish with the roadmap. So it wasn't too broad. We didn't want to start talking about other things uh, beyond the SDGs, but we did want pretty early on feedback in order to allow us to then discuss this feedback, whether it was constructive or whether it was, you know, feedback on things that we had to address or, or, or develop more in, in, in detail. So uh, we later on provided feedback uh, in written form as in the form of draft. So I think those two stages were, were extremely important. And, and as I said earlier, really just gives validation to the, to the document uh, and, and, and the outcome is credible and robust, right? Um, so I think that, uh, you know, the, 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 these partnerships and, the, and the, the, the are, are essential. I mean, one of the SDGs is around partnerships and collaboration. So we see this consultation in a way kind of as, is, is that, that element, you know, you need to work with, with all these different uh, stakeholder groups uh, even though some of them might be critical of the, of the work that you're doing. But uh, that's, that's really the only way to have, um, I think, the best um, output in terms of, of really addressing those, those key impacts. You might have an opinion of what your impacts are, but it really provides a lot of context when other groups can tell you what their, their perception is on that. Um, so I think, you know, they, they, they validated or, or they challenged some of our assumptions and those, as I said, were, were really generally discussed among S S S uh, FSG members. And, uh, and, and ultimately, they encouraged us to be a little bit more bold in our commitments. We, we included some, some, a few text boxes that addressed some of the issues that came up, which mm -hmm. were not perhaps too connected with, with the SDGs per se. But I think those are statements that are necessary in terms of starting to, to talk and work on, on, on the SDGs. So... Um, you know, I, I, th I think uh, ultimately this is about not being the view of just a few group of, of, of companies it's, and, uh, and it's, it really provides a degree of confidence and, in, in you know, in broad acceptance of, across the sector of, of the product. In terms of what recommendations, well, our, our, in our case, all engagements were, were virtual. So, I mean, there's, there's really not, not a big, uh, you know, difference to what could be done today. Um, so, so, and, and, um, and, 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 and yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that the, the timing, I, as I said before, is, is, is important. I think bringing them in early with perhaps just the informal conversation and really gather all the, the input and then follow up with a written form, I think is something that we would encourage other sectors to do as well. Great, thank you for sharing that. And definitely, the, I guess the format and style and type of engagement has been different with each of the groups, but it's great to get your insight as we go forward with, with the others. And so thank you, um, Nicholas, for that. Um, um, next, we'll go to a question. It will be for, for everyone, because um, I think it's relevant um, for all sectors across the globe right now. Maybe Maureen will start with you, but it, it's really on the response. Um, so on the top of everyone's mind right now is the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and how to drive sustainable, healthy, safe, and inclusive recoveries. Um, so, so what to do differently and how to do things better um, as we go back to business. Um, for all the panelists, um, I guess looking to see um, if you could tell us how COVID has influenced um, either your approach, uh, if possible, specifically for the roadmap. And, and, and if that's uh, maybe too specific, more broadly, your approach to the SDGs and sustainability goals. Um, and maybe Maureen, we could start with you and then we'll go um, through the rest of the panel. Sure. Can you hear me okay? Uh, yep, we can. Perfect. No, I guess um, as far as how COVID has, it has impacted um, the sector's efforts around uh, the sector roadmap, uh, I would say it hasn't impacted us much at all. Um, we have had some delays in process and um, reaching out to certain stakeholders, obviously but certainly feel that this is still a priority um, effort for, for the sector as, as well as we're seeing that commitment at the individual company level to continue to move this forward. 
And I think one of the things that um, we're, we're recognizing as we go through the process um, is, you know, some of the social aspects that maybe may have not been on the radar or were you know, brewing behind the scenes for our sector. Um, COVID has certainly emphasized um, the potential for some of those to become a, a higher priority opportunity for us um, to, further, to further advance the progress in those areas. Um, I, I think that's all. I, again, it hasn't really slowed us down. We're still moving. We're still moving it forward, and um, you know, just dealing with the challenges um, as, as we roll through the process. Great, thank you, Maureen. And it's great to hear that the social aspects are coming out um, as maybe a higher or different priority, or maybe an area for opportunity. So great to hear that. Um, maybe if we go to if we go just across to the the images on the screen, starting with Ant um, first. Yeah, so I mean, in terms of how it's affected the process, I mean, I think it's it's going to delay kind of the the finalization of it. Uh, mm -hmm. We lost some face-to-face uh, -face time at a pretty much just as, uh, as as kind of the lockdown was starting, at least in the UK, and that would have. Uh, but we've we've managed to, I think, um, supplement kind of uh, the the roadmap with other other, other uh, meetings and things so it's been a, it's it's kind of slowed it down a bit and we, we've also kind of lost our we were aiming for the the high level political forum in, in july which it, it kind of won't go ahead as, as planned so um there's some some almost some logistical pieces there but that's kind of maybe not not so interesting for, for others but i think maybe the the key piece around and this is more from maybe from a company perspective but the whole kind of build back better um, piece and, and, you know, the idea that essentially post COVID will really accelerate um, kind of things that might've happened anyway, frankly. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that's certainly within BP, something which we rec recognize and support. Um, and I would expect there to be, um, again, I think in terms of what passes for being suitably ambitious is potentially, potentially raised by stakeholders who are now, kind of energized by the notion of kind of creating something, you know, bolder and new and, and certainly at a faster pace than, than might otherwise have been the case. So um, kind of reflecting that in, in the, uh, in the roadmap, I think is, is something which we, we need to, we need to consider certainly. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. And for that, um, Anna, maybe over to you. Yeah. Um, I think Maureen um, basically summarized was, what the COVID issue was in terms of our roadmap. I think the the good thing for our our process is that we enter it with with open minds in terms of including social aspects as much as we could despite of the TAP work or or focus areas. So that gave us the the intent or that or the willingness to consider all the aspects of, of, of SDGs in this process. So I won't say that it necessarily changed dramatically our approach as, as Maureen well said. We had logistic delays and probably some of the stakeholders that we were engaging with they were uh, swamped or overwhelmed or didn't have the headcount at, at the time to kind of have those interactions with us. But in terms of the approach I think we're very close to our original goal. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you, Anna. So good to hear that um, it's not causing delays that we can't work with. Um, so so thanks for that. Um, maybe uh, Nicholas and then Eduardo. Sure. I you know it's it's interesting. This is this is still ongoing um, in Latin America here. We're we're being hit pretty hard right now with COVID. Mm -hmm. But um, you know I I think one of the one of the things that we've realized and this is really more of a general sustainability statement you know is that we tend to talk a lot about the importance of long term thinking and planning and action and and I think covid has taught us that short term responses are as important in in the world of sustainability what well, I mean in this case we had to act quickly uh, we moved 4,000 something people to, from, you know, physical work to remote working, and 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 so our our response has to be um, in the short term as good as, as as this sort of long term thinking that that we tend to to argue for. Um, that's I think one thing. Um, as as a sort of business that produces essential products, um, I think that the pandemic in a way has enabled us to really focus on those important issues. I mean, it's time to really be uh, 
focused and, and concentrate on those things that really matter. So in a way, it's it's really helped us to um, just identify those things that are, are really the, the the key issues that those things that really move the, the needle. And, um, you know, it's interesting that for us in, in the forest and, and, and both in paper sector is, is that it, you know, it, it, the, the, the pandemic has, has really allowed the society at large, I think, to understand sort of the diversity of, of the products and the solutions that, that we provide and also the critical role of fiber-based products. So, so we, we, companies in our sector might spend quite a bit on, on, on communications and other efforts. And, and, and curiously enough, I think that this has, through, through a completely unexpected um, um, event, really highlighted something that, that we sometimes haven't been very successful in communicating. But the complexity of, of how from trees and, and then fiber products and final products uh, people interact with our products in day-to-day -day life is something that we also find has been a positive outcome of, of the pandemic. Now, of course, we've, we've been dealing with a lot of social and other, other issues around um, mm -hmm. our, our, our collaborators and our communities, and, and it's been an um, extremely difficult time for everyone. There's, there's, there's no, uh, no, no, no discussion around you know, wanting to get out of this as, soon as, as quickly as possible. And, and I think in terms of, of priorities, I, we don't see priorities really shifting. On the contrary, I think uh, the urgency of taking action uh, is perhaps clearer than, than it was. Um, but, but perhaps we'll just have to adjust the approach to, to for example, the action pathways on, on the roadmap. So we might have thought pre-pandemic that we were going to do this with you know, these funds and we do these partners mm -hmm. and this way. And, and really now we've just had to refocus how, how we're going to get there. But there's, there's multiple paths to, to, you know, a desired outcome. So we're, we're not pushing the deadlines and our goals. We're not pushing the ambition, as, um, you know. So, so you know, we, we, you need to be focused on those key elements that, that you know, that are best fit to, to address, you know, these issues uh, and, and special Special focus, perhaps, on the enablers and those key partnerships uh, that that are that are needed in these sort of uncertain times. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you, Nicholas. Um, some great points there. And maybe Eduardo, over to you uh, for the same question. Yeah. Um, well, we haven't discussed enough to to permit me to to state uh, anything definitive. Um, mm -hmm. But we believe, as uh, Maureen said, that the, the social uh, dimension of our work uh, will be more um, uh, strong, stronger, really, because uh, the COVID opened uh, a number of issues that everybody understands that uh, are relevant and uh, can change uh, a lot of things in the future. But for the, the, the main uh, for the main goal of the electric sector, um, nobody so far uh, expressed uh, some uh, specific uh, impacts from COVID on the, the roadmap till now. Till now, but we haven't discussed uh, enough the, the point. Mm -hmm. Anyway, from my personal side. Um, what I feel uh, is that um, uh, now, together with climate change, COVID is a, a global issue that helps people thinking uh, that uh, you need to face globally uh, global issues. So uh, the side effect in terms of political uh, questions I believe um, is um, now we have a, a stronger global agenda. <laughs> it's a side effect, but I feel it is a positive side effect. Mm -hmm. No more climate change is the single issue. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, social aspects are global, of course, um, and biodiversity uh, is climbing up on priorities. That's very mm -hmm. good. 
Great, thank you. So um, some great insight from the group and I, I kind of jotted down four points um, of how it may be impacting goals. So one, the social dimension is more critical than ever or maybe more clear uh, that things need to be prioritized differently. Um, it's giving companies a chance to identify what critical issues are um, maybe differently than they have before. Um, also, what activities post, um, I guess, post lockdown and recovery that need to be accelerated? So maybe again, where to move quicker than than the plan would be. And um, I like your point, Nicholas. Uh, it's even more clear the urgency to act. Um, so again, there's more momentum, uh, and the point you had around short-term responses and being agile, I think, is uh, a really interesting one. Um, we have a few more questions for the panel, but um, I do want to give the group on the webinar a chance to respond. Um, so uh, please do come off mute if you have a question. Um, I know that could take a moment, um, so I'll pause or feel free to write anything into the chat um, for any of the panelists um, or myself if you do have a question. Again, I'll pause for a minute for anyone who would like to ask. Great, I'll just wait another moment while people collect their thoughts. And, and actually maybe while we're doing that, Maureen, I have another question um, for you. And it's, it's kind of interesting because again, the tire sector roadmap is under development. Um, I was wondering your thoughts on um, how you think you'll implement the roadmap um, once it's done, um, given, given that it's still a work in progress. Sure, sure. So I think, as you highlighted, we are relatively early in the process. Um, I think that we're really focused as we go through the process on identifying those opportunities that as a sector we can have the biggest impact um, while still understanding our influence on the other SDGs, of course. But mm -hmm. um, I think what we've identified so far in the process is really um, to move some of these topics forward. Mm -hmm. There's really a need for collaboration. Um, and I think we've we've again, early in the stage, but have identified some uh, unique opportunities to potentially collaborate, not only within the sector, but with key stakeholders and across sectors to really be able to have an impact on some of these. So I think that, um, you know, we'll, we hope to see some of those um, opportunities for collaboration further refined and develop as we go through the rest of the process. Um, and then, you know, also too, I think we've had a lot of conversation about how we can leverage this exercise to improve our communication as a sector mm -hmm. on how we, um, how we impact the SDGs, whether that's work that we've been doing through the, the tire industry project or, you know, forward work that could come out of it, either, either as a sector or as individual companies. Um, I think it, it does a nice job of helping companies articulate where they have impact and um, frame up how some of the work that they're doing advances progress towards the SDGs as well. Um, so I think those are two areas that I would say um, that's how we hope to, to use the, the, the process going forward. Mm -hmm. Great points. I, I think um, within your group, you are identifying some really interesting areas on where to collaborate, where you're part of um, a value chain and doing it alone won't work. So I think that is essential and great points there. Um, again, uh, I'll pause for a moment um, or I'll carry on with some other questions, but would anyone like to come off mute um, or again, please feel free to type a question. If you're not able to come off mute, it might be the case for some. Okay, um, I'll, I'll carry on, but again, please do type your questions. We're, we're happy to, to mix things around. Um, Anthony, another question for you, and I was thinking of kind of building off your experience with the SDG Atlas, which is a few years old, and it's kind of that first step of the, of the, of the framework we're using right now for the sector roadmaps. Um, I guess how, based on what you've done and what the plans are for the roadmap, how do you plan to socialize the roadmap to build capacity and increase uptake um, for individual companies, but also the sector as a whole? Sure, yeah, I mean, and I think there's, it's almost worth reflecting on the kind of the, the parties that have an ability to, to work with this, if you like, and not to name all of them, but, you know, IPK is one, um, which obviously is a, provides a conduit for, for the implementation of, across the, the sector. So whether that be in kind of promoting it, but also engaging on behalf of the sector with other mm -hmm. stakeholders and 
uh, and, and you know that's been a key task in terms of getting external uh, inputs into kind of what external parties think need to be addressed within within the, the roadmap so far. Um, but obviously there's peer learning case studies and, and those sorts of things. So there's a role for IPCA there, I think. Um, on the WBCSD side, obviously kind of broadening that beyond just our sector. And we've spoken, uh, you know, several times around almost different points of the value chain. And actually there are, you know, many, many inter interactions with other, other sectors as well. So there's a kind of a, a role, I think, for, for WBCSD within there. And then also kind of companies themselves um, have have a role to, to to take the roadmap and to to reflect on it to um, put into implementation the, the parts of the roadmap um, which apply to you know kind of the the, the value chain or the, the type of business and I think that's where kind of the, the the process we've kind of gone through is really around trying to to flesh out those opportunities mm -hmm. um, not not be too um, well I mean not dictate you know what needs to happen by a certain company um, there mm -hmm. is the, you know IPCA can almost dictate things that it will do itself to support um, implementation by companies, but to really enable companies to, to use the roadmap as a, as a point of inspiration, really, and, and to take mm -hmm. that and, and run with it. And, and one thing I'd, I'd add in that context is, I mean, having been involved in sort of the process of getting there, I think the, you know, that kind of, you know, from BP's side, again, that's kind of led into, we've sort of taken that input um, in kind of the, the process we've kind of gone through and used that to, to inform the way that we think about uh, kind of our, our sort of ambition on um, climate and also a new purpose, which we launched in February. So mm -hmm. there's, there's, there's value in sort of reflecting on that. And, and I guess that the point there is really the roadmap as it's published is kind of one thing, but actually the, the kind of the thinking that you go through and the interaction that you, the, you, you go through to get to that point you know, is it's arguably for our case actually has greater value in some cases because it it really sort of exposes those conversations and, and those opportunities. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you for that. No, that's great to hear. Um, and maybe Anna, a question over to you. Thinking more broadly towards the sector, um, what do you think will make the roadmap most interesting to your stakeholders and really set it apart from uh, from other documents? And I'm thinking again that the tire industry. Um, our tip within the WBCSD has produced lots of material. Um, what do you think will make this stand out for stakeholders? Uh, well, I think one of the most important elements is that um, in the past, maybe TIP was very focused on um, creating content or, or having proof of science of things that we've done, but the the, um, the actions or how to operationalize those findings um, was more for each of the companies uh, to, to implement or to decide on. I think with the SDG um, sector roadmap, what we are going to be able to do is to drive further those collaborations and those interactions in terms of solutions with our stakeholders. Mm -hmm. We identify the, the, the opportunities, but then um, we also identify where we can collaborate with specific stakeholders. So we make our stakeholders uh, the priority for this process. We invited them since day zero uh, when we started the, the exercise. And even though we're very early on, on our process, we expect them to be involved throughout the process, um, not only to validate what the industry thinks, but for us to hear what they want us to be focusing on. So just having that first connection at the beginning, I think it's going to set up the pace for what we expect mm -hmm. as an outcome mm -hmm. for this um, document in the, in, the, in the long run. And I think also opens a lot of doors for, as I said before, those uh, interaction, cross-sector collaboration, understanding, again, that um, solutions or, or uh, the positive impact will be possible or could be achieved faster if we work together instead of in isolation. Um, mm -hmm. But there will also be a lot of opportunities for the companies, members that are the, the member companies of TIP to interact in a one-on-one -on -one basis with those same stakeholders who recognize the importance um, of trade associations, as, as Anthony mentioned before. I mean, how critical they are in this process and how it is relevant for the, the regions that we um, operate in and the regions that we want to impact to kind of work together with them to kind of drive that change. Um, so I think it's uh, the the new ad for this document would be that um, it will be science based, but it will be also implementation and execution in a, in a different and more um, holistic way. Mm -hmm. Great. 
Um, thank you. And, and when we have been speaking to stakeholders, um, many of them are, are echoing what you're saying. They, they do want the science-based decision-making, um, the importance of collaboration and seeking stakeholder feedback throughout it. Um, so some great points there. Um, Eduardo, maybe the same question for you. And I, I guess, um, how do you think the roadmap may help you engage more effectively with the stakeholders in the electric utilities sector? Um, taking uh, many things that uh, others said as good and fine and very well said. Um, what, what I can add is about um, uh, a change on um, a company's uh, positioning. Um, a couple of years ago, uh, I believe nobody, uh, no company in general, was um, uh, trying to uh, transparently uh, commit to external goals. I think this is a kind of new, uh, a new stuff, a new thing, a new, a new way of doing uh, business, uh, stating and committing, committing to um, external goals, internal strategy, but also to distant goals, mm -hmm. setting ambition. This is new and we have a lot of uh, uh, road to, to move on still because a couple of companies understand this new positioning, but uh, I believe the, major of the, the majority of the companies really are not uh, on that point of the road. So the, the roadmap can help very much um, uh, improving that uh, this concept, the concept mm -hmm. of setting uh, commitments based on uh, indicators and uh, defined targets. So, mm -hmm. if the, the the only outcome uh, we can uh, get from the roadmap uh, uh, should be this one, I would say that uh, it will be a marvelous outcome. Great, thank you for that. Definitely setting the ambition high, and so we'll keep that in mind for the group. Um, we only have a, um, about five minutes left, so I guess a final kind of question for the panel. And again, maybe Maureen, we'll start with you and just um, some brief thoughts again. Um, before we'll have a, a wrap up from Uta. But um, I guess if you have any advice that you would give a WBCSD um, or ERM as we continue to develop sector roadmaps, um, and to advice on how to improve or do things different, or I guess the key learning you've taken away. Um, so maybe Maureen, and then we'll go across um, the, the images on the screen. Sure, um, I, I guess um, from my perspective, one of the, the key learnings was really taking the time to identify the right stakeholders up front. Mm -hmm. Um, and making sure that, you know, they, they understood our sector and could offer, um, you know, good input into mm -hmm. our sector's um, impact on the SDGs. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think that was really important, but also making sure that you had broad stakeholder groups. Um, you know, some of the ones that we reached out to, we really struggled to find somebody who could reflect all aspects of the SDGs that understood yeah. this, the tire sector, but that was a really important step for us to make sure that we were getting that holistic input. Um, so I, I think that's probably my biggest takeaway um, from the process is just that early upfront work to make sure that we, mm -hmm. um, you get the right input to shape your roadmap going forward. And then obviously, mm -hmm. you know, the maintaining that stakeholder engagement along the way. So you make sure you have a credible document in the end. We're not quite there yet, mm -hmm. but we're doing, um, we're doing our part to try to make sure that we maintain that as we go through the process. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you, Maureen. Um, Anthony. Yeah, um, I mean, to, to build on Maureen's points in some ways, I think I think there's a the more you kind of plan and prepare up front, the potentially the easier it is later on, maybe. Um, so agreeing on a kind of a common vision, uh, kind of principles, what you just what is ambitious, kind of uh, making sure that people are really clear from the outset what mm -hmm. it is you're trying to achieve here, um, recognizing that um, these things are difficult. You're working with you know with many different companies and across a really varied um, sector in our case. So. Um, being clear from the outset around kind of what you're trying to achieve, um, making sure people uh, kind of understand that and then um, there are no sorts of surprises or as few surprises later on as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and that, and I just add in, is, you know, uh, continued patience, which I'm sure you can appreciate, Brian, having sat in my Yeah, no, absolutely. 
Great, thanks, Anthony. And again, just for the rest, in the interest of time, we'll keep it brief, but maybe Anna, Nicholas, and Eduardo, just um, your, your top point of advice or, or takeaway from the process so far. I think for me it would be in terms of um, challenging the process every time you are discussing the, the findings, the agreements. I think it is important to have um, an approach where the industry or, the, or this exercise sets the bar high, but also that makes um, issues or items actionable in a way that you're not going to be set up for failure, you know. So challenge the process, go back, revisit. This happens with COVID for us because we're right in the middle of it. So go back and, and, and try to challenge the process enough that sets uh, expectations high for the industry. Otherwise, it's going to be very um, kind of a mild approach, but that would be for me. Great. Thank you, Anna. Yeah, I, you know, I, I think that uh, building on the success of each new roadmap is, is critical. Um, I, I think that the benefit for, for those that we participate, you know, having WBCSD and ERM sort of partnering is great because um, we, we worked with uh, building on, on, on the early stages of the, the chemical sector roadmap. And so we learned a lot from that exercise. And I'm sure that those that have followed after the forest sector has have sort of done their, their, their own learnings and benefiting from what's existing. So I think that that is, is key. We already talked about those sort of synergies across roadmaps. So what, what can we find that where, where the collaborations are, are really leveraged? But, you know, ultimately, I think the SDGs are, are extremely complex, ambitious, and, and also dynamic. I mean, COVID has really shown us that, 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 that things move. They're not, they're not set in stone. So I, I strongly believe that without a sort of focused roadmap, achieving any level of impact seems quite unlikely. Um, so roadmaps allow, you know, for, for tracking progress. And, and, and that's also extremely important uh, as a... Uh, at least my CEO said when he presented this to the UN, this, this, this unveiling of the roadmap is really not the end of a process, it's just the beginning. This, this mm -hmm. is really where the, the, the work begins. Um, so I think that's, that's sort of the, the key uh, closing remarks I would, I would add. Great, great inspiration, Nicholas. Thank you. And Eduardo, again, maybe if we keep it brief and then we'll hand it back over to Uta for some final, um, uh, a minute or two of closing. Thanks. Two minor comments, uh, one about uh, we are living uh, a period of uh, innovation because for ambition and uh, huge problems we need to innovate and this is hard to include uh, uh, in each uh, roadmap because there are a lot of open questions but uh, innovation uh, should uh, uh, transport us to, to the goals and this need to be put uh, written on the stone uh, on our roadmaps. The second topic is about uh, probably it's time to look uh, over our shoulder and try to include the, the second and third and fourth tier of our supply chain uh, to promote uh, the SDGs. It's not enough, I believe, to look at our first tier. And then mm -hmm. it will be mandatory that we include in our tenders and our codes of conduct for supply chain and suppliers, uh, the SDGs uh, as a mandatory topic and probably uh, taking care of some indicators that are very, very relevant. For instance, why don't we uh, include as mandatory to publish uh, a sustainability report. This is an indicator from the SDGs and probably we can scale up that uh, throughout the, our supply chain. Mm -hmm. Great points. Well, well, thank you everyone to the panel. Um, apologies are running a minute or two late. Uta, I'll hand over to you for some final remarks. Thank you, Brian, and thanks to um, the, the panelists for your uh, very engaged conversation and uh, sharing of, of insights. Uh, again, apologies, we're running a little over, but it's hard to just stop a very interesting conversation. <laughs> so um, allow me to um, just a few words of, um, of, of wrap up. Uh, I think it was already brought up, the high level political forum um, this year, which is the main event 
on a platform to track progress on the SDGs, on the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, um, is of course moving to a virtual format um, for obvious reasons. The theme hasn't changed, the, the, the urgency hasn't changed. Uh, however, of course, the, the format uh, has to change and so does our event, which we have been now uh, co-organizing with UN DESA for a number of years. Um, and it will be held virtually on the 14th of July. Um, and our events team will be sharing uh, more information soon and can, of course, be always contacted if you have any, any questions. Uh, with that said, um, I think we can just move on. Um, please uh, just watch your inbox for the slides, for the recording of the session. We will share it very soon. Please visit our website uh, for finding out more about the roadmap work, but also, of course, uh, of how business is responding to COVID. There's plenty of resources available. Um, and if you have new initiatives to share that we haven't captured yet, please do let us know. And with that, um, again, thank you. Thank you to, um, to you for joining us. And uh, thanks to all the panelists uh, for taking the time uh, today to share, to share your insights with us and to, to be so engaged and helping out in the, in the preparations as well. And thanks to Florian for running everything so smoothly on the technical side in the background and uh, Filippo as well um, for the uh, introductory remarks on the SDG landscape. So thanks a lot. Um, it was a pleasure uh, to have you with us today and we'll be in touch very soon. Thank you.